In episode 1, I created and released a game in 2 weeks. Also, I animated the thumbnail. <laughs> Just for fun, even though I'm only gonna show it for a few seconds. Worth it! In episode 2, we cranked it up a notch. I added particles, clouds, and the power of flower. It's nice. Oh, also, I rapped. I got some indicators in the kit. Don't watch episode 2, okay? No, you should if you haven't, really. <laughs> you should go watch it right now. <laughs> Today I'm gonna talk a bit about level design. I implemented touch controls. And I implemented one of you guys' suggestions. But first, roll the intro. If you are new here, let me quickly explain what the game is about. It's a puzzle game where you unleash the skeletons. Because you think it's fun. Fun! When you have unleashed all of the skeletons of death, the red exit door unlocks and you can escape the level. There is no jump, but gravity do affect the player. You can also teleport using the blue teleportation doors. I should also mention I have released this game for free playable in the browser. Even the source code is publicly available. But don't check that out because the code is really really scary. Now let's check out one of the suggestions one of you guys had. Tan Tan, please! You have to fix the following issues with your particles and position interpolation. Number one! Holding left or right on the respective screen border side creates a lot of grass. Number two! Holding down on any tile creates a lot of dirt. Number three! Holding up on a door makes the character float in between the doors. This is unacceptable! As that is not totally how real teleportation doors work. How do you know how real door teleportation works? I know for a fact this is exactly how real door teleportation works. Don't believe me? Check this out! If you think I'm going to animate this, then you're so wrong! <laughs> No, really, I'm aware of this issue. It's actually bugging the framework I'm using. I, I could dig into the source code. Oh, dig in there. It's not high on the priority list. I don't know, go crazy, guys. It's still in the game. <laughs> Tan Tan, can we please dig up the flowers and foliage? Actually, that is a great idea. Let's implement that. <laughs> Here is the first try of picking the flowers. I made it so, hopefully, when you dig the plants, they will move up. That should happen, I hope. Okay, it's going down, but it's working at least. A few seconds later, and now they should be removed instead. Hey! I added the particle system. I'm using the default value, so things will probably go crazy. We'll see. Hey. Okay, let's fix the position first. So, la 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 la. Oh, it's finally done. Oh man. I wrote some pretty bad code, but uh, this will probably work. Yes. Uh, hey, it's using the right texture at least. Flower. Haha. -ha. Flower. Uh, grass? Grass? Now it should work! Yes! Now it looks a bit crazy, but the plants duplicate and they are huge, but I followed the instruction manuals exactly because it wasn't one. When there is no instruction manual, the programmer does as he pleases. Oh, by the way, you should totally follow me on my Twitter account. I post sometimes when I feel like it. Thank you, Uber Dragon, for your comments. Dragon? I should add a dragon to the game. Yes! No, Tantan. No! 
I wanted to see if I could get the game to compile to mobile. I did know that the game did actually run on the mobile if you played it through the browser, but there was no way to move the player around. So I implemented simple swipe controls and BAM! I guess we have a mobile game now. But uh, Tan Tan, who in the world would go onto the browser to play a mobile game? That's a good point. Compiling the game to Android, there's no clear-cut easy way to do it. It's possible, but I'd rather not spend an entire week just getting it compiling to the mobile. The game works on the mobile if you play it through the browser, but yeah. And even if I were to release this game to mobile, there's a lot of things I would want to have in the game, like menus, level selection, settings. The scope of the project would grow a lot, and I want to get back to my skiing game. <laughs> Soon guys, soon. <laughs> Let's talk a bit about level design, I'm of course no expert on this, I'm a programmer at heart. But I wanna share my experience and some thoughts I have. The way I like to design levels is by kind of forcing the player to learn how a mechanic works like. In order to complete some levels you need to know that you can stand on a skeleton. If you don't know that, the level is gonna be really frustrating. So the way I try to design my levels is that you unintentionally discover these things. In this level, for example, the only thing you can do is, well, drop down here. That's how you learn about falling through the floor going up. And here, the only thing you can do here is to use the teleporter. This is kind of how I work with the uh, level design. Now, at first I just drew everything in paint. It, I didn't use the actual graphics, I used just blocks. Then I just <laughs> went into paint, copied and pasted and moved things around. But I realized I can use the pixel art program I'm using. This level serves a specific purpose, and that is to teach the player that you can stand on the skeleton, which I talked about before. When you drop down, you're gonna land on the skeleton. <clears throat> this is a level I like a lot. Instinctively, we usually tend to want to go right when playing games. If you go to the right here, I mean, you're heading towards the exit, but this is totally wrong. So this is actually a endless loop. You can't get anywhere from here, but you can die. I want to try to teach the player that sometimes you should not do the obvious thing. In this case, we just go left and use the teleporter. Here's a variation of the standing on the skeleton. I like to introduce the mechanic very simply, then just add a bit more things to, to really make sure that the player understands that this is something you can do. This is another kind of a playing a trick on the player type of level. So you start out right here. Of course the first thing you do is to unbury this one. You get to the exit, but you need to release this one as well. So you drop down here, and what do you do? Well, you use the teleporter. I place these blocks in a kind of a tricky way, so you're heading to the right, you unbury this one. Now if you drop down to the right, you're gonna have an issue because this skeleton is going towards you. It's going to fall down, and wow, you're stuck. Yes, the evil plan, ha ha ha. I like the signing levels with this mindset, because usually the player is just doing what they feel would be the obvious way to do it. And then when they do it, they hopefully come to a realization, I need to rethink this. I wanted to add some more levels because I just didn't have that many. Some that teaches the mechanic, but also I wanted some harder levels. I wanted to add 9 more levels, but that's not how it ended up. After a long time of tweaking and changing, and even removing one of the maps, this is what I ended up with. So, so on paper, the idea of the levels didn't really play out always. A level I thought would be hard was actually easy. Another level turned out to be a bit harder. Now I need to figure out where to place all of these. I'm just gonna play the game and you think, would it be better if I had one of these in between? So, that's what I'm gonna do now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and play my game if you want to. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon. Have a nice day. Goodbye, good subscribe. Yes.